In this video, we will take a look at the relative strength of oxidizing agents and then use that knowledge to build a reduction table. First, let's take a look at how a reduction table is uh, determined. We're going to study single replacement reactions because they are simple to study. We can easily determine whether or not a reaction has occurred. We can also determine if an electron transfer has occurred just because if a reaction does occur, we know one species is being reduced and the other is being oxidized. Now, in the past, we have assumed that all single replacement uh, reactions are spontaneous and occur, but that is actually not true. There are some single replacement that reactions that will not occur spontaneously. It could occur, but we need to give it a little bit of a push. So then how, do we, how can we decide which reactions are going to be spontaneous and which one will need a little help? Well, we're going to need to look at a reduction table. Experimentally, we can determine how reactive any particular metal ion is by reacting them with different metals and determining how many different metals do those ions react with. So for example, in your textbook there is a table and it tells you that for silver ions, it will react with both copper solid, lead solid, and zinc solid. Whereas copper ions will only react with uh, lead solid and solid zinc. And lead ions will only react with zinc metal, and zinc ions won't react with any metals at all. So as we can tell, the most reactive metal ion will be silver because we reacted with three metals. So here we can say that the most reactive metal ion is silver ion, has the greatest tendency to gain the electrons. It's a good oxidizing agent because it helps the uh, solid metals become oxidized. And then the least reactive ion here is zinc ion because it did not react with any of the solid metals. And it has no tendency to gain any electrons. This is a, another oxidizing agent, but this is a weak oxidizing agent. It does not tend to gain electron at all. Whereas silver ions, we can say it's a strong oxidizing agent because it tends to oxidize a lot of the other uh, solid metals. So in our previous slide, we determined what is a strong oxidizing agent and which is a weak oxidizing agent. It is actually uh, more useful if we list it in a vertical table. We're going to list our strong oxidizing agent in the top uh, row and our weak oxidizing agent in our bottom row. And then for copper ions and lead ions, we can rank them between silver ion and zinc ion in terms of their uh, reactivity. We knew that copper ion reacted with two solid metals, lead and zinc, so we're going to replace, place it just below silver, whereas lead ions only reacted with one solid metal, zinc, so we're going to place that below copper ion as well. Now, in this order that we've put it in, this is also the list of the strength of the oxidizing agents. Just like in acids and bases, we're going to list our strong compounds up in the top left, and in a weaker compounds, so weak oxidizing agents in the bottom left. Now in the past slide, we just uh, determined the reactivity of metal ions. We can also go ahead and determine the reactivity of the solid metals as well. Here in this case, we have zinc and we reacted it with silver ion, copper ion, and lead ions, and we found that that reacted with all three ions. Uh, for a solid silver, it only reacted with the silver ions and copper ion. Copper solid only reacted with uh, lead ion or silver ions, whereas solid silver did not react with any of the ions. So then again, we just determined the relative strengths of these metals, of these reactivities. We found that a zinc was the most reactive and silver was the least reactive. What we've just done is that we've just determined the strength of these oxidation half reactions. We just determined that zinc solid is a very good reducing agent because it can reduce silver ions, copper ion, and lead ions. So we can actually write uh, the strongest reducing agent here in the top again. And then we just determined silver is a very poor reduction agent because it cannot react with any of the three metals here. So as a weak reducing agent, we can put it on the bottom. Here, this table, we just determined the uh, oxidation half reactions. Here we have our strongest reduction agent on top and our weakest 
reduction agent on the bottom. If we were to combine uh, our knowledge of reduction agent strengths and oxidation agent strengths, we find that metal ions are typically oxidizing agents and metal atoms are reducing agents. And then if we combine our knowledge, we can create a relative table or a table of relative strengths of oxidizing agents and reduction agents. Here we can put our strong oxidization uh, agents on the top left, weak oxidization on the bottom left. And then if we look at our reduction agent, we can actually reverse the way that we written the uh, react oxidation reactions from the previous slide, and then put our strongest reducing agents on the bottom right and our weakest reduction agent on the top right. So if we read our chart going from left to right, these are all going to be reduction reactions. And if we read our chart from the right to the left, these are all going to be oxidation half reactions. Now we can use this table to help us predict which reaction will be spontaneous and which reaction will not be spontaneous. The rule that we can use to determine if any particular single replacement reaction is spontaneous or not is that if the oxidizing agent is above the reduction agent in our table of relative strengths, then that reaction will be spontaneous. So again, let's look at an example here. If our oxidizing agent is above our reduction agent, this is going to be a spontaneous reaction. Conversely, if our oxidizing agent is below our reduction agent, then it's going to be a non-spontaneous reaction. So let's take our knowledge of strong oxidized agents and strong reduction agents, and we can create a redox table built based on empirical or lab results. Here we have uh, six different metal ions reacting with six solid different solid metals or their corresponding solid metals. And the first thing we need to decide is what are our oxidation agents and what are our reduction agents. Now because these are metallic ions, they all tend to gain electrons, so all our oxidizing agents are all our metallic ions. So everything here are going to be our oxidizing agents. On the other hand, what are our reduction agents? These are things that are going to get oxidized, and in this case it is going to be our uh, solid metals. They're going to be our reduction agents. Now, we could also do a lab where we're given non-metal ions and non-metal, uh, well, not solids, but let's say gases or liquids, and do a reaction that way. However, in a lab environment, it's easier to deal with uh, metal ions and solid metals. Our next step is to determine which of our oxidized agents, which are the metal ions, are the most reactive. Looking at the chart, we see that D ions are the most reactive because they react with five different solid metals. So this is our most reactive, or first. Uh, the next most reactive is the A ion because it reacted with four different metals. Next is our F2 plus ion, so this is our third most reactive. Then followed by B ions and C ions. And lastly, the uh, E ions. It did not interact with any solid metals at all. Now, while we often don't need to look at our reduction agents, let's do it in this case just to uh, be safe. What is our most reactive solid metal? We find it is our E metal because it reacts with five different ions, followed by our C metal, so our second most reactive. Then we're looking for our B metal because it reacts with the three different uh, metal ions. And then it's our F metal, so that's fourth. Our fifth most reactive metal was A, and our sixth most reactive metal, or least reactive metal, is metal D. So now that we've determined the strengths of our oxidizing agent and the strengths of our reduction agent, we can build a reduction table. We're going to talk about uh, oxidizing agents because those are the things that get reduced, and this is a reduction half reaction table. We said that D ion was the most reactive, so we're going to place it at the very top. And next we said our A ion was the next most reactive. We're going to place that just below D. Our F ion was third reactive, followed by our B ion and our C ion. And then our least reactive oxidizing agent was the E ion. Now because of their respective charges, uh, D ion is going to get, gain three electrons to become a solid D metal. A plus is going to gain one electron and so on and so forth. 
just by looking at our uh, oxidizing agents and their reduction reactions, we've already built our reduction table. Here we have our strongest oxidized agent, and here we have our weakest uh, oxidizing agent. We can also go back and double check and see do we actually have our strongest reduction agent listed on the bottom right, and our weakest reduction agent listed on the top. In our previous slide, we said E metal was the most reactive, followed by a C metal, and our B metal, F metal, A metal, and lastly, our least reactive metal was our D metal. So yes, indeed, uh, we do have our table listed correctly, both in terms of our oxidizing agent strengths, here on the left-hand side, as well as our uh, reduction agent strength, going from bottom to top on the right-hand side. If we're given data for non-metallic ions and uh, non-metallic pure substances, we will be very similar, except that now, in, in that case, uh, we'll have, let's say, oxygen gas plus two electrons, actually four electrons, yields four O2 minus. Oxygen gas is still an oxidizing agent, and electrons are still uh, being added on the reaction side. However, notice that here, uh, if we're building a table of uh, non-metallic elements, uh, the things on the left here are not charged, whereas the, the species on the right here are charged, which is opposite if we're dealing with metallic ions.